Hi, welcome back to Cracking the Cryptic and a thoroughly miserable day here in the UK. It is absolutely heinous weather. Um, that's not going to stop us hopefully doing an entertaining video. Um, this, uh, this puzzle today we've selected from a tweet that came in on our Twitter account, which is at Cryptic Cracking, and it came from Mark. And hopefully it's going to give us an opportunity to demonstrate this uh, slot machine technique that we discussed a couple of uh, days ago on the channel. This is Derek Neal's new technique for solving some very, very difficult Sudoku patterns. Um, and Mark tried a puzzle, it was an expert rated puzzle, got stuck and then got completely unstuck using this technique. Um, our Twitter account is probably a place uh, you should consider following if you're if you don't already. Um, we had a very amusing tweet this morning from uh, an ex-Australian international rugby player saying he's cancelled his Netflix subscription in order to spend more time on our channel, which is as things should be and, uh, and tickled us greatly. Um, if you want to try the puzzle on the screen then just click the link under the video and that'll take you to the software and you can have a go. Um, one other piece of admin news, um, June's Patreon reward puzzle is now up for our patrons so if you're a patron of the channel thank you very much and we've got a straight straight sudoku for you this month and then there's also a video uh, on patreon uh, showing you how to solve the puzzle should you uh, wish to see that um, so that's two dollars for the puzzle three dollars um, gets you the video as well so any of you in a position to do that it would be massively appreciated now what i'm going to try and do is, is solve this puzzle um, uh, without using the slot machine. So I'm going to try uh, and just see how far I can get um, using my little old brain and hopefully I'll get a good way through it if not finish it um, and demonstrate that the slot machine is completely unnecessary but if I do get stuck or if I feel the video is dragging a bit then I'm going to resort to the slot machine and show you why it's so powerful um, assuming I can figure out how it works uh, for this puzzle. So let's have a look. Um, Right, um, seeing terribly much instantly. Uh, sevens, okay, so we have a seven here, a seven here, and this seven. So that square has to be a seven, therefore, this is a seven. If you look down here, it's a little bit interesting. We can't put a seven in this square because if we do, we have nowhere to place a 7 in this box. So the 7 must be here, row 7. Um, and let's pencil mark some 7s into the two boxes we haven't got 7s in yet. OK. Now, look at this 1, 6 in column 2. They're quite nice in terms of this 3x3 three three block. That's going to give us a 1, 6 pair. And no, I can't see anything immediate from that. But what we can do, we must have two, th oh, not two, three, five, I'm talking about um, two, three, and four into these three positions here. So in fact, that can only be two or three, that can only be three or four, and that can be anything. So we get two, three, four, triple down these three squares. So five, eight, nine must go into these three squares. And that's well, it's also not ideal, but I'm still going to notate that. I'm using central candidate notation for uh, for boxes. So when when a notation is in the centre of a box, that means that that box can only contain the numbers shown in the centre. When I put numbers on the sides of boxes like this around the edge, that's Snyder notation. So what I'm doing there is I'm looking at the logic of the three by three box overall. And I'm saying that the number can only go in two positions within the box. Um, right, so what can we do next? Nearly do something with twos and nines. Look, there's a two and nine in column five and a two and nine in row five. So we know that one of these three squares must take a two and a nine, but I can't see a way of doing much more with that. Um, Ah, sixes can only go in two positions up here. It's those two squares. And four can only go in two positions up there. It's those two squares. So that's 
twos, twos into those two squares because of this two and this two. Right, well, I think I'm going to be not seeing much at all, to be honest, which I suppose I shouldn't be that surprised by. Um, but let's start having a look at some of the rows and the columns that have a lot of given digits. So, see if we can spot anything else. So, one, four, eight, nine down column seven. So, uh, ah. So 1, 4, 8 into these two squares. Let's just highlight that for a second or think about it. Um, this 8 here means there's an 8 in one of those two squares. And I guess the 9 means the same thing. So 1, 4. So this square must be a 1 or a 3. Because it can't be an eight and a nine. Three. Let's check column nine now. So one, three, four, six, eight. Ah, this square. One, three. So this can only be four or eight. This can be anything. Let's check row row seven now. So two, four, five, eight. 2, 4 into that square because of the 5 and the 8. Over. <laughs> um, right. This is difficult. Um, let's try and use this. Can we do anything with this 3, 3, 9, 6 triple? Yes, we can actually. Look, 3 and 6 appear here. So we know there's no 3 and 6 in these three squares. There's no 3 and 6 in these three squares. Now, I haven't checked row 8 here, but I can see in row 9, because we've pencil marked the 5, 8 and the 1, 4, 8, this, there's only two positions the 3 and the 6 can go into. That's this square. This can be a 3 and a 6. And this square. So there is a 3, 6 pair in this row 9. So one, two, four, five, eight. One. Oh dear. Um. Oh, hang on. One, four, eight here. Look, one, four, that's one, four, eight triple. So in this box, I've got to place two, three. Five and six, I think, into these positions. So let's look at this. Two, th two, three, five into that square. Oh no, no three, because there's a three here. So this is a two, five. This is two, three, five or six. Ah, and that, that's just three or six. Ah, which matches this three, six. There's a three, six pair in box nine which means this can't be a 3, so we've got a 2-5 pair now, which is blooming useless because, look, we've got the 2s and the 5s up here. Um, ah, now, hang on, this, this is interesting. Actually, this is quite interesting. Look at this square. Now, we've got... Um, We've got a chain that comes off this square because, and it's nice actually, it is nice. It's going to give us a, a number. So let's think about this square quite carefully. Obviously it could be a one, but the interesting thing is what happens if it's a three. Now if it's a three, this square is a six, and this square is a three, this square is a six, and this square is a one. So either this square is a one or this square is a one. Therefore, neither of these two squares can be a 1. And therefore, where can we put a 1 in this box? Only here. That's the only square that can take a 1, because of the 1 at the top there. Um, now, 
hopefully that's going to give us something. Three, four, six, eight. So this square is quite restricted now. I think this can only be a three or an eight. This can be three. This can be four, six, or eight. I think. Ah, and let's just check the rest of this box. So we've got three, eight, and nine. So this is an eight or a nine pair. And this is a three, nine. Ah, that's annoying, isn't it? Nearly. Let's just check um, the rest of column eight, though, because we've still got because we've got this two, five pair. Look. So we've still got to place. Uh, what's it going to be? Three, six, eight, and nine. So this square is an eight or a nine, and this square is six, eight, or nine. Uh, no. Okay. Four, eight, nine. This is four, eight, nine. Let's check the rest of um, row six here. So we've got two, three. Four, Four, nine. So this square again is restricted. We're finding a few restrictions. But I'm not seeing I'm not seeing anything brilliant. Um, Alright, I don't want the video to be too long. I'm not saying I can't do this puzzle, but I'm I can it's certainly gonna be challenging. Um ah. uh, anyway, so what we'll do now is we'll say, okay, I, I fully agree this is a hard puzzle. This is definitely a hard, hard puzzle. Um and I'm sorry, I'm still staring at it, seeing if I can see anything clever. But let let's now um, go back and try and see what happens when we use the slot machine method. So what we need to do first is to find the number that we can apply the slot machine to. So remember what we're looking for is a digit that's only appearing once in every set of three columns. So once in this set of three columns, once in this set of three columns, once in this set of three columns, and once in each um, in each set of three rows as well. So ones are no good, because obviously they're repeated in this set of three columns. Twos are no good. Threes, no, but have we only got two threes in the grid? No, we need, and we need three. Okay, so we, we, need, we need three numbers that meet that criteria. Four, there's only one four in the grid. Fives are no good. Sixes are, sixes are good. Sixes are good, look. Six appears once in this three column, once in these three columns, once in these three columns, once in these three rows, once in these three rows, and once in these three rows. So six does work, seven doesn't work, eight, there's only one eight in the grid, so that doesn't work, and nines don't work. So it must be six. That's the number we're looking at. So now what we'll do is we'll use highlighting, and we're going to highlight in it, each 3x3 three three box, the positions that 6s can go into, and I'll do it in, I'll do it in green. Um, so, uh, in this box, 6 can go into one, oh, how do I do this? Is it like that? Maybe I have to press the number. Yeah, that works. Um, and in this box down here, the 6 can't, the 6 can go into 3 positions, I think, in this box. In this box, three positions again. Shouldn't have highlighted that one. Um, in this box, just two positions. In this box, three positions. And in the last box, three positions. So this is the configuration of sixes. And now the idea, if you remember, is what we do is we select a box, we've, we've met the criteria, we mustn't have four cells in a box, otherwise it can get a bit tricky. You can still work with four, four sixes possible in a three by three box, but in that say, case, you have to start with one of the uh, cells in that foursome and try and eliminate down. Now, here, I'm gonna take one of the 
uh, three by three boxes where the sixes are in two positions because that's going to be simple. So let's look up here. Let's take this position um, and work through what happens if this is a six. So uh, how am I going to show this? So if this is a six, we'll switch to red now. So red is going to indicate that this is our starting um, our starting guess, if you like. You can see immediately that's going to give us um, this square is going to have to be the six. This square is going to be a six. This square is going to be a six. This square is ah okay. So there we go. This is why this works. So we're going to get a six repeated in row two if we select the six into this square. So what does that tell us? Well, that tells us that this in this box this cannot be the six. The six must be in this square and that is not a number <laughs> that we could have got uh, or I was even thinking about in terms of how my solve was progressing certainly didn't notice that this had to be a six um, and you can see straight away how powerful this being a six is it's going to give us an eight nine pair here it gives us a four here gives us a 1-8 pair down here. It gets into this chain that we were looking at down at the bottom because now this must be 3, this must be 6, this is 3. Um, and all of a sudden I can well believe that the puzzle becomes uh, rather more straightforward than it used to be. You can see that 8-9 pair now is going to give us a 3 in this box. That's going to give us an 8 here and a 9 here and a 4 here. Wow. Um, and all of a sudden, the grid looks much more, uh, much more fillable. In fact, that square therefore has to be a four. This is, good lord, this is just completely falling apart. That's astonishing. Um, so this is the power of this slot machine method. It is. I mean, it really is a thing of beauty. And um, we've had a few comments on the channel. Most of the comments are over, overwhelmingly positive, but we have had some saying this is just sort of um, a, a way of guessing. Um, and therefore, you know, we shouldn't really be too excited about it. But I, I think it is a, a form of guessing, but it's a very intelligent form of guessing. So it sets up the guess to be successful an awful lot of the time. And speaking to some speed solvers, which is uh, which I've been doing over the last couple of days in response to our video, there is a lot of interest from the speed solving community in what this is showing because it is, you know, if you're doing this at speed, if you're stuck on a puzzle, it's not, you know, it's probably 20 or 30 seconds in this instance to get the sixes uh, or the pattern of the sixes down and then to test the two options. It's not that long. Now, obviously, Sometimes the slot machine isn't going to work and you're not actually going to you know, get anything out of it. But um, on those occasions you do, you could be giving yourself a big, big advantage. Um, uh, and obviously the speed solvers are all looking for any sort of edge like that. So, yeah, very, very interesting stuff. Um, I'll let you go through the puzzle in your own time. I think at this point we can safely say it's been reduced to something that's uh, rather more manageable. Um, so thank you Mark for sending in the tweet. Do let us know in the comments what you uh, what you think of the slot machine, whether you're enjoying using it. Ah, I had an idea actually. One thing we could do, um, so I've just done it, is I've typed this puzzle into a solver to see whether or not um, I was missing anything at the point that I got stuck. Um, so let's take a look through this now and see so you can see sevens going in, at, um, which is where we started. That is doing something. Oh yeah, okay, this is finding some triples. We found this one uh, and we found that one. So that's okay. So we, we're on track. The three six pair, we found that. The three six pair, we found that. And I don't know what it's doing now. It's found some ones. What it's doing. Let's get to the point where it's actually going to tell us something clever. Um, whoa, what is this? Simple colouring. <laughs> Simple colouring gets rid of a nine in that square. That's, yeah, brilliant. That's not going to help very much. Whoa. 
Ah, now this is interesting. So this is what we've just used. This and this is very much in line with what we expect from the slot machine, which is that it picks up X cycles, which are otherwise incredibly difficult to spot. So you can see that the computer here has figured out this that this this six is important using this X cycle technique. But you can also see, I hope, that if you're trying to detect the X cycle from the denseness of information in the relevant squares, it is very, very hard to do. And that is why the slot machine is so powerful. So let's, I think we can turn that off and see whether, uh, okay, well, that's what, that's what I spotted, which is, um, I know it's not what I spotted, because I spotted that that had to be a what, that's what it's going to spot next. So let's see it do that. And so, so this is now where I got completely stuck. Okay, hidden, unique, rectangle, whatever that means. Another one of those. Whoa, aligned pair exclusion. I venture to say unspottable by a human. Whoa, something else. A 3D Medusa. Okay, again not very spottable and then it finds another way back into this six so yeah okay I mean I hopefully you can all see this is this is monstrously hard to get your head around uh, any other way and spotting uh, X cycles and I think the other thing that this apparently does is it sort of it, it unwinds swordfishes for you so if there's a swordfish technique that could could be useful then the slot machine can find it in a very you know, a very much easier way than uh, spotting swordfishes. We have done a few swordfish videos on the channel, and believe me, they are they're, they're not easy to spot live. It really is a complicated beast. Um, we have had a couple of requests recently as well to do a video on Sudoku terminology, and we will try and do that in due course. But that is enough from me now. Thanks for watching. We'll be back soon with another edition.